Good morning from Valley, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, I wanted to talk to you about attention deficits. And this is something that I believe that most of us have heard a lot about. We've certainly heard about that diagnosis for children. And we hear about this diagnosis for more and more adults. And if you've been watching me for a little while, you might know that I'm not really fond of labels and we can think of attention deficit as a label. And we know that medicine really favors labels because once something is labeled, then one can treat it. So today I thought I'd talk about attention deficit in a different sort of way that might make you help you understand it in a different perspective. So I thought I'd start with one quotation by Adi Shankaracharya. And this quotation, of course, would come back to non-duality. But this says, the knowledge about of non-duality brings about the cessation of the notions of difference. So again, the knowledge of non-duality brings about the cessation of the notions of difference. Now, this is an important idea to think about when we're thinking of labels because as soon as we label something or someone with a particular condition with a particular diagnosis we start looking at them differently we start treating them differently we start speaking about them differently and this is not very useful for our long-term management of anything so today one of the first thing I want to make sure that you know is that labeling attention deficit, whether in children or in adults, is not always helpful. And then I'd like to talk to you about what else we can do to be more helpful. And one of the things that we can think about is literally what are we paying attention to? And when we think about the average person and how much we pay attention, we often are not really paying attention to our own minds. So oftentimes we'll look at something, we'll speak about something, we'll behave a particular way, and we ourselves are not paying attention. Then when someone is clearly, very obviously not paying attention, we notice it. When we notice it, we talk about it. And when we talk about it, we bring it on more. So now a person who's not paying attention, who's been given perhaps a reprimand in school from a teacher of pay attention where I'm speaking, suddenly starts feeling a little bit more self-conscious, suddenly starts becoming a little bit less attentive. Now we might think that, no, you know, some people just have personalities that are just less attentive than others. Perfect. That's right. Each one of us presents ourselves in slightly different ways. And the minute we label something, we feel like we need to treat it. And that's part of the training that we've received from the medical experience and you know that I work in healthcare so I understand this and yes there's different ways to work with anything but I think that if we start with a space of understanding it helps to bring our attention to what is most important so what draws a child's attention is probably more important to what's taking away my child's attention right so that sort of idea so it's the same thing for adults that what is drawing this person's attention versus what is taking away this person's attention and it's very interesting that if we really want to learn about people and understand people we can come from a space of understanding rather than the space of judgment, which would then say, what's making them not do what I would like them to do, which is paying attention. Now, how about for ourselves? Do we pay attention? Is it something we'd like to do? Or is it just something we expect from others? I'd like to model what I would like to see around me. So paying attention to anyone that I'm speaking to, or thinking about, or doing an action or activity with all of these things requires a full attention so even when i'm making a video here <laughs> it requires an attention and i'm hoping that you are attentive to this video too so the next quotation of course that i want to share with you would only bring this to light this quotation is by howard Rheingold, and it says Pay attention to what you're paying attention to. And this is a hallmark of understanding mindfulness too. When we look at mindfulness, we're paying attention to. If someone says, I'm going to pay attention to my breathing, we're paying attention to what we're paying attention to, right? If I'm paying attention to a picture and I'm looking at a flower, I'm paying attention to what am I paying attention to? This is the flower that I'm paying attention to. So this mindfulness technique is very useful when we communicate with each other too.
even when we're communicating with ourselves, if I'm paying attention to the thoughts that are in my mind and I'm judging myself about those thoughts, I can now pay attention to what I'm paying attention to. I'm paying attention to what I'm criticizing as opposed to I'm paying attention to, wow, this is really great that's happening in my mind. Wow, look at how many things I can think of simultaneously as opposed to, oh my goodness, I can't focus, right? So different ways to pay attention to our own minds. So that was the quotation by Howard Rheingold. And finally, I wanted to finish with one more quotation. This is by Tara Brack. And this quotation, I think, believe is part of the reasons that we're seeing this attention deficit in the world, in my opinion, because we have stopped paying attention to each other. We really have. We've stopped paying attention to ourselves. This is how much is on my mind is a very good thing. Now, most people will say, oh, my mind is so busy. I've got so many things to do in life and there's so many things on my mind. So people are aware of that. How do I bring that to a space that is manageable? Some people will write lists. Some people will make sure that they have some meditative time. Some people will make sure that they limit how much they do in a day, which is all, all wonderful techniques. When we're paying attention to our mind, can we pay attention to how we're paying attention to other people? Because that's a profound energy that we can use, this attention. And are we paying attention? Because many people miss paying attention and many people miss having attention when they're even speaking with someone or when they're thinking about someone if someone re remembers them at that time they feel that an energy has been paid attention to and that energy has connected for two thoughts that have created a union of energies that has then got people in contact with each other speaking with each other when we're right with each other or whether we're far from each other how do we pay attention to each other Today, I would like you to know this final quotation as I end this video. This quotation is by Tara Brack, and it says, paying attention is the most basic and profound expression of love. And love is very healing. So when we think about attention deficit, how do you think that this has become such a regular diagnosis in our world right now. It's not only limited to North America, it's certainly happening everywhere. But I will tell you that this idea of who is paying attention to a child to begin with and paying attention with a loving compassion. Wow, this child has a lot of energy. Wow, this child has such an active creative mind. Wow, I wonder what this child might be able to create because it's such a profound mind this child is working with. Same thing for adults. This person has so many different ideas and is so creative. And let me listen to this person. Or I have this plan to speak with someone and I am going to be so present because I'm really looking forward to connecting with this person. And today, you know, I just uh, recently had some communication with uh, my landlady in Ontario while I'm in Bali. And it was such an exciting message to receive from her that she was so curious about my experience here so far and it was from a true interest a true attention to what's going on for you and it's so beautiful to have those experiences today i hope that you will share that with yourself as you figure out what is your mind focusing on what are the things that you think about and see if you are paying attention to the the things that are in your own mind and the people that are around you too. Because when we're attentive in our communication, that is the most profound expression of love. I wish you a fabulous day ahead, reflecting on those ideas. And I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone.